Hello students, this is Brock Skaggs. I'm going to make this relatively short video discussing how to create shear and bending moment diagrams inside of SolidWorks. And the example we'll be looking at here is a very simple example you might have seen in statics, a cantilever beam with a uniform distributed load. And so the exact length we're going to be dealing with is a 10 foot beam. The distributed load is going to be 100 pounds per foot. And so just we have something to compare with, I've went through and I've ran a theoretical calculation of what these plots should look like. Uh, there's the uh, free body diagram and equilibrium equations to get to the reactions, then another free body diagram to derive the internal shear relationship and the internal bending moment. And then I just plotted them over the length of the beam itself there. And so in blue there, you've got the internal shear force plot starting at a maximum value of 1,000 pounds at the fixed connection on the very far left, and then linearly decreasing all the way to zero at the free end. And then the internal bending moment plot starts out at a maximum magnitude, if you will, if I just take the absolute value of 5,000 foot-pounds at the fixed connection, and then it has this nice curved relationship which trends down to zero at the free end there. And that curve you can see is going to be a, a parabola. Uh, you can see it in variables here on this line and then with the numbers filled in. And one thing that's going to be a little bit different between these plots and what we'll show in SolidWorks is units. Uh, here I'm using for my length unit is going to be feet and so my bending moment units are in foot-pounds and my x values are in feet and so we'll just have to make note of that when we get into SolidWorks. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into SOLIDWORKS and start working. And so I'll just start a regular part file here. I'm just going to get on the front plane and make a line segment that is 10 feet long and also horizontal here. And so 10 feet is 120 inches. So there's that bit. I'll exit the sketch. And since we are dealing with beams, I'm going to go ahead and use weldments. So now I'm out of the sketch. I'll go right into weldments and use a structural member. And let's just use this first one that popped up uh, in S section here, uh, 5 by 10. And I'll apply it. Uh, here I usually like to make them look a little bit better. And so I'll have my loads going down in the negative Y direction. And have my beam oriented like so. And so it went relatively quickly, but basically all we did was create our beam geometry there using weldments. And so that's all I need to do on the modeling side of things. But first I'm going to go ahead and save this. Just in case anything bad happens here. And so now we're done with the modeling, we'll go into the simulation. So simulation new study. I'll just leave it a static one and one a study static study as well. And now I'm inside of the static simulation. And so one of the first things I need to do is check the element type and then also apply material. And so since I was using weldment geometry inside of the part modeling area, it's going to be transferred directly into beam elements. And so that's what you can see right here, where I've drilled down through my folders to find the live case. Here's my body and here's the icon next to it to tell it what type of mesh it's going to be. And that is a beam mesh type with that kind of I-beam cross section. Now one thing you might have come in from is just using like a regular boss extrude from uh, the part modeling side of things and then came in to simulation and it was going to be a solid element type. Um, what you would have to do there is right click and you would edit the definition. Instead of beam or truss you would have it as a solid element, something like that. And so you could just right click on it and say treat as beam in order to get back there. And so let's go ahead and apply material while I'm on this icon. I'll just right click, apply it to material. And let's make this ASTM A36, even though that shouldn't matter a whole lot for our specific example we're looking at here. Uh, next, I've been fiddling around between solid elements and uh, beam elements, so I should go ahead and look at my joints. Here, there's no joints, so I'll calculate them. Uh, there should be two. You can see one here on the bottom right and another one joint two being in the back left here. So that looks good. I'll go ahead and accept that. So moving right along, uh, if you remember we're doing a cantilever beam here, so one of these joints is going to be a fixed connection. And so I'll call this one my fixed connection. This will be my free connection here. And so here I'll just right click on fixtures and add a fixed geometry. It's waiting for me now to select a joint. And so I'll declare this joint as my fixed joint. Notice I'm just using the default fixed joint 
reference here. And I'll accept that. And so at this point, I'm done with fixtures. Now I need to go down to external loads. And so the external loads, I've got a distributed load that I want to distribute uniformly across the length of the beam. The lowercase w value is 100 pounds per foot. Uh, the static with, statically equivalent point load, or the total load pushing downward on the beam would be 100 pounds per foot times the 10 feet. Uh, it's always going to be the area under the distributed load curve here, just a rectangle, so base times height, if you will. So 1,000 pounds. And that's kind of the thought process that I'll go through when I enter the, the values here inside of SolidWorks. And so to apply the external applied load, we'll right click and we'll go apply force. Now here we don't want to apply it to the point, we don't want to apply it to the joint, but we want to apply it on a beam itself. And so I'll select the beam icon, and I'm going to select, of course, our structural member one, the only beam geometry we have. Then I'll come over here, I'll define a plane for referencing these items down here. I'll go English IPS, and notice I could check per unit length here, but I'm going to leave that unchecked, and then I will just go straight down to this icon here, where it's a little probably difficult to see, so I'll grow those arrows a little bit. Now I've got arrows pointing in the, the downward direction there, just like I want. And so since I do not have the per unit length checkbox checked, I'll be entering the capital W value here, or the total downward load that this beam is going to be experiencing. In this case, it'll be 1,000 pounds, and SOLIDWORKS is going to know to distribute that uniformly along the length of the beam. You can see there's an area even down here inside of the force descriptions where you could do a non-uniform beam loading if you so desired. But we're here we're keeping it fairly simple, fairly vanilla, if you will, and so we'll just have 1,000 pounds here, and it'll be distributed evenly over the length of the beam. So with that, I'll hit the green check mark to accept. So with that, I think we're ready to mesh and run. And so I will first right click, I'll just say create mesh, creates it, meshes it very quickly with these beam element types. And next I'll go to run the study. Again, very simple model. So we have it basically returning results almost instantaneously. And you're greeted with the usual default stress plot and displacement plot, upper mount axial and bending here, and the URI's result plot here for the displacement. For this video, the whole purpose was to show shear and bending moment diagrams, and so uh, that's what we're up to next. And so to do that, I like to right-click on the results folder, and down here is define beam diagrams. And so this is the path that I follow to get to the, the shear and bending moment diagrams. Uh, so I'll just select that at this point. You can see the different options you have under display. You have force plots, shear axial force plots, shear force plots, bending moment plots, and then also actual torque plots as well that you could play applying. Here we're after the middle four as far as shear force and bending moments that you usually talk about in terms of these beam places. And so let's just try the first one, shear force in direction one. I want to be in pounds for my English unit. I'm also going to go to chart options and turning to floating with no decimal places. And hit OK. And so if I go to the front view, you can see we have a plot um, that looks similar to this plot here, right? It's a nice linear uh, function here. As far as at the fixed end here on the left-hand side, we have the absolute value being the same, 1,000 pounds and 1,000 pounds here. And then we turn to zero at the free end there. The thing you might be noticing here, it's upside down, if you will. Um, ours is a function that has a negative slope and starts and a positive value. Here they have a negative value where it starts with and has a positive slope there. I believe what you're seeing there is just a matter of sign convention, depending on how you relate uh, the direction of internal shear force on the, say, free body diagram to a positive or negative side when you go to run these plots there. And so in a lot of cases we're just interested in the maximum value as far as the absolute value, the maximum magnitude, if you will, which in this case would suffice either way there. And so don't be totally thrown off by that. Uh, one other thing that I'd like to show you, though, on these plots is there's different directions tied to them. And so this shear force plot is basically the shear forces acting in the XY plane, if you will. But there was two plots there, right? If I right-click and go to beam diagrams again, notice we did use shear force in direction 1, but what if I use shear force in direction 2? And so I'll create a second shear force plot and do the same thing as far as units go just so it's easier to read, and then hit OK. 
Notice I get a similar plot as far as the shape goes, but notice the legend here on the right hand side. Absolutely nothing at all, zero, 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 zero. Basically what that's telling us is there's no shear forces acting in direction two, which is basically acting in the XZ plane. And so here you wouldn't even be really be interested in this plot, but you would be interested in this plot here for the simple case we're looking at. Now let's go to the bending moment. So I'll just edit this shear plot that we don't need. I'll change it now from shear force in direction two to let's say bend, bending moment in direction one. Notice the units are going to be a little different. Here's pounds force times inch, and the units we were looking at in our theoretical would be pounds force times feet. And so we'll just have to make that check. Um, I've changed the plot. Now we'll show the plot. Notice here I'm in the moment about direction one. I see all the zeros. So same logic as before. The moment must be in direction two that I'm looking for. And so here I'll go to direction two. And now obviously I've got non-zero values there. And here, uh, let's just go to the, the top view. There we go. And 60,000 inch-pounds is the maximum value. And so let's check our hand calcs here. Um, we were at a maximum, again, absolute value of 5,000 foot-pounds. Uh, 5,000 foot-pounds times 12 pounds, or excuse me, times 12 inches per foot would get you again to 60,000 inch-pounds there. And so uh, those two maximum values are equivalent, just different units. And then we also have the different sign convention happening here as well, just between the either negative values that I'm showing here or on SOLIDWORKS, all the, the positive values there. But that should be the same curve if I looked at the values and just took the absolute values of them. And so for this beam, we have successfully found the bending moment as well as shear force here in SOLIDWORKS. And so thank you for watching the video, and hopefully this helps you with your beam analysis.